So lots of new snow here at Bear Valley. The guys have done an incredible job getting the surface prepared. And then of course, last night, we picked up another several inches of snow. So put the cat on it, moved the snow off the course. So we bumped the start back to 1245. Yeah, GS, I haven't skied on GS skis in a while, and so qualifying was a little bit different than slalom. I love slalom. I, I think I'm a better slalom skier than a GS skier. Oh boy, nice that caught her out right there. No, no, no. Just one little bounce of the ski. She lost the pressure on an outside ski just for a moment. Drop low over the bottom. Middle jump to go. This is where things get tricky on both these courses. Bouncing through that hole goes Mozinski. In control, off goes to the Norbay. It's Aaron Mozinski to the top step of the podium once again here in Bear Valley. Forgot to do this yesterday. <laughs> go deep, hit the ruts not crash. Who can put this together without making any mistakes? Ketterer smooth, good edge angle, top of the turn. Oh, so making trouble, out he goes. We don't like to see it end like that. David Ketterer looks over his shoulder, finally realizes he's by himself. Ketterer with the win today. Yeah, so Ketterer and Sovek swapping positions from yesterday. Equal money for those two. We're not supposed to be out here. Outside expectations. Built for the outdoors. With the capability to climb this high, we're not supposed to be out here. Which is exactly why we are. The off-road ready Mazda CX-50. We're looking for outsiders. Welcome to Taos, a place guided by our fierce independence and confluence of cultures and further emboldened by our connection to Mother Nature. A place that challenges itself to be better, not bigger, to preserve the essence of winter. From electrifying our fleet to improving the health of our forests, we strive to be better for the good. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be the future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad, and they were right. As they say, you want to have a snowstorm, what you do is you schedule a ski race. So 
Um, as always, I want to thank our partners and, and sponsors to start. The first one here is Taos. Taos puts up the prize money for this event and plans all the entertainment over the course of the weekend. It's going to be hard to squeeze in 96 heats of racing every day, Friday and Saturday. Uh, we did have to change a couple of gates at this event last year towards the later rounds. Snow is deep, but not on the race course. We've done a lot of work. Taos, the Taos crew, amazing. So there's two jumps to get right to it. Uh, no waterfall jump. Right now it's a 15 meter set to the first jump, 16 to the alley and then we'll see what happens once we go down that alley. But we're on schedule kind of for, you know, what, 10.30 to start? So uh, yeah, we're gonna go up early, we're gonna try to make it right. We're gonna get down to a hard surface, I believe, all the way to the alley. We're doing what we can and uh, <laughs> we'll go from there. I think it's anyone's race and everyone just has to race their hardest and what some of us who don't race World Cup anymore maybe lack, maybe we can make up for in other places. And so I think it's a really exciting race for everyone. And um, the most fun thing is just to come and race with everyone and, and for me to, to get back on skis. A lot more fun when Aaron's next to me. <laughs> um, no, I think uh, the Pro Tour is a really great format. Like River said, it's just you and the person next to you. It's no longer you and the clock. I'm excited to be here and I'm lucky enough to have my parents and some good friends out there. So it's shocking to see how much snow there is here. I just came in from Mexico, so to be out there in this much snow. It's, <laughs> it's really fun to see the stacked leader uh, start list. Uh, we've got a lot of competitive World Cup skiers here. You know, I'm just gonna say I'm not scared. I'm more just motivated uh, because the Pro Tour is a different format and a different style of racing. The World Cup skiers, the foreigners coming into this event trying to figure it out and sort of a, a fun challenge every year when we get here. So. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we're going to try to figure it out tomorrow and, and then hopefully get to match up with this guy. My name is Christopher Neary. Uh, I am the owner of CB Sports, the uh, vintage ski brand, and I uh, am now a equity owner in the World Pro Ski Tour. CB Vaughn in 1963, skied 130 miles an hour and uh, in Portillo, Chile, and then um, made his way back to Manchester, Vermont, and started uh, CB Sports, which was a uh, high-end technical ski brand uh, that was thrived from the mid 70s to the early 90s, and by far the most uh, technical and sought-after brand. We were fortunate enough to, after 30 plus years of hibernation, we were able to obtain the trademark and relaunch the brand back into the ski industry um, to help re-authenticate it as a technical, high-end technical ski brand, and then ex expand from just the ski industry to the water sports world, which it also was worn from 74 to 84 by Dennis Conner on the America's Cup. And uh, at this point, we, um, our background is in technical garment manufacturing and fiber yarn and fabric. So we have a pretty good platform to work from to make this uh, world's number one ski brand and uh, a great household name. The, the history of the brand was quite strong, um, primarily in the East, because it was an East, you know, a, a Vermont brand. Um, but it moved over into, into the Midwest and then ultimately out to the, uh, to the Rockies. CB Sports trying to re-authenticate itself, um, it invested in the sponsorship of the World Pro Ski Tour. And when we showed up in Steamboat, Colorado last year, myself and my team of, of, of folks, um, we saw a great opportunity to get this brand into all the different assets that the World Pro Ski Tour owned, which is, you know, the live show that happens during the races, the weekend of the races. The, you know the Fox show that's aired on now prime time, and then a, a, as well as our you know Life in Between the Gates docu series, which uh, we think is a is a great asset to the tour. Once we got to know some of the folks in the World Pro Ski Tour, we thought we could even help the World Pro Ski Tour um, evolve from a, a great framework that John Franklin and Briar Schreiber you know worked on the past few years in the relaunch, um, and everything that Ed. Rogers had done in the past um, 
it was a great opportunity to bring some more like-minded people together and and help John and his team focus on you know focus on sponsors focus on um, you know managing uh, investors that are involved in it and then uh, ultimately managing races and relationships with mountains around the country you know being a part of the world pro ski tour um, from a brand perspective um, as well um, being a part of the industry a little bit you know upstream um, we think we can build a really fun environment for young skiers that don't have um, places to race after college um, if they can't make you know a World Cup team um, but one thing I can promise is that we're gonna have a hell of a lot more fun than the World Cup So again, the fastest eight off of each course, each run, populate the ladder for tomorrow's elimination rounds. Again, we're skiing for times today. Tomorrow we go to differential mode. It's actually, I'm actually very surprised and impressed by the course crew, how good they got it to be. Because I mean, around the mountain, it snowed so much the last couple of days, and it's good. It looks really fun, and I'm excited to just get started. Yeah, I mean, a lot of big competition here. Um, so Tuba and I really wanted to qualify first run, so that was nice to kind of get that in. Um, the jumps are pretty big, especially the first jump, so there's a lot of tactics at play, and so hopefully we can use that to our advantage against these World Cup girls and World Cup podiumers. Feeling good, feeling dangerous. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, at the bottom, oxygen is a little scarce, but um, <laughs> up here and on the course, skis are feeling good. Um, liking the way I took, uh, I like my approach on the first run, and off that momentum. Uh, it's definitely better than uh, everything else up here since it, there's a lot of snow up here so they're trying to make it as good as possible. It's it's going to be rough but it's, uh, it's still okay to ski. I'm going to push as much as I'm confident in doing but I feel like for every run I do I can be more and more confident to push even more. There's also going to be a groove that's going to make it easier too. For me, it's to work with. I think our figures we finished today before it gets too warm. <laughs> it gets a little soft. Snow is, is great considering we just got five feet. Um, it's pretty grippy, so we kind of need to be aware of like our feet and our pressure. Yeah, Kaya took a few few uh, events off. Uh, her sister Tuva was uh, racing, but she's back at it. And both these ladies putting a hammer down. She's like synchronized racing right now. In the World Cup, Miss Trisha Mangan on the blue course and the red. Paula Moulton, number one on that red course side with the fastest time on that course and fastest time overall between both courses. Paula Moulton with a 36.66, the only one of the 36s. I'm going to push it pretty hard. I, even on the camera, it will probably look like I'm cruising, but I will, I'll be pushing. Uh, I have to. I have to try to get as uh, best um, qualifying position as possible. And um, yeah, so for me, it's straight to hard work from run one and here we go i'm just trying to learn the learn the uh, race a little bit learn the start kind of figure it out a bit um i'm just trying to have fun and, and get some cool head-to-head -head competition which is always a blast so today is just the qualifier so getting two solid runs in get in the mix get a feel for the start get a feel for the snow and the jumps and then tomorrow we'll be racing Oh, I did pretty okay, you know. <laughs> um, I'm definitely in the bottom of the bracket, but that's all right. I just came out here to have a good time. It's been a while since I have trained in the sport of ski racing, so it's just nice to be here. I just kind of was too aggressive to where coming into where the trail turns didn't give enough space. And snow is a little soft, so I was a little wild off the jump, so we'll refine that a little bit this time too, and uh, hopefully put down a nice thing qualifying run. I mean, I think you just gotta push it. Like it's, uh, there's so many good guys out here. Uh, a lot of guys that just do this event, you know, which is like a huge. Uh, it's it's a different race kind of, and uh, so you just gotta go all out, I think, and and try to give yourself a good position for the for the heats tomorrow, so you're not going against the fastest guy in the qualifier. Yeah. Aspen was my first time doing the pro tour, so that was fun but also like a little bit nerve-wracking like jumping over the jumps and starting out of the start gate for the first time so today was already way more chill so yeah i'm just excited for the next few days i think that 
after winning a race in Aspen and getting a third, a third place as well, kind of reinvigorated me to get out back onto the slope as much as possible. So uh, before Bear Valley, I was able to, I, I skied every Tuesday, essentially. I coached my high school, Blake High School back in Minnesota, and then uh, I had a little beer league, shout out Mother Buckers on the uh, ski challenge. I got some time in gates and it, it, definitely, it definitely helps to get that repetition. Builds confidence, builds strength. So I, after Aspen, I was able to get some, some decent reps in. There's kind of three components of skiing in my mind, or maybe four, mental, I kind of bucket mental, and then just tactical approach to skiing um, and, and your technique. Those don't really go away. Uh, the two things that are the hardest part for me are fitness. Uh, I'm not in the gym six hours a day like I used to be. And then also uh, just touch. Touch on the snow when conditions get tough. If it's a perfect slope, it's just like riding a bike. It's no problem. There's not, not any variables to deal with. When we're starting to get holes in the course and there's a groove, that changes your timing. You can't go where you want to. The course is dictating where you have to go. So those two components are, are, I think, what's holding me back from potentially um, doing even better in these events. But, you know, I'm happy with where I'm at and uh, I'm having fun and staying competitive. The start is definitely experience. You, you know, there's a couple different starts for dual racing. It can either be a drop down or a saloon, and we have the saloon style. You know, I've just, I've just really honed in the timing. Um, I'm a very visual learner, so I like to go off of the Christmas tree of lights rather than the sound particularly in the second run when you have a differential and you're trying to discern, okay, which beep is mine, which beep is my competitors. I pick my spot on the Christmas tree of lights and I never deviate from it. I've developed it over the years and I'm confident in it, so I will never, I probably won't change it uh, going forward. And you know, it shows, it's, I'm, I'm quick out of the start. Taos brings a whole nother level of energy. Aspen and Bear Valley were amazing venues in, in their own rights, and I love going back there. But Taos, when we were able to get some of the World Cup uh, skiers and bring in you know, some of the legends, I had breakfast with Steve and Phil Mayer this morning, that was pretty fun. Dinner with Peekaboo Streak the other night. And, you know, it's nice because it validates your own skiing and your own efforts. You know, I'm beating people who scored World Cup points this year. That's pretty rare. It makes you feel better about your own efforts and it validates the tour as a, a legitimate competitive place to perform the highest level of ski racing that we possibly can. I think that starting here, you know, I like to stay in the moment. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, last year I surprised myself and ended up fourth in the giant slalom, which I'm a slalom guy. I'm from Buck Hill. We don't necessarily ski a lot of G, uh, GS, so I'm looking forward to carrying that momentum from last year. I love this hill for GS, and you know, I finally have found a setup that I really like. It's old. Dusted off a pair of 2011 GS skis from uh, when I was on the development of the US team. And I think it works great for this format. Um, you know, in Bear Valley, I was skiing really good GS and got a little unlucky with some weather, but feeling confident on the skis and, and strong. So I'm really looking forward to uh, getting back onto the, the race hill at, at Taos here and trying to, trying to do a little repeat into, the, into at least the small finals for tomorrow. It's all about Bluebird race day fun here oh, with yeah. these young athletes out there with the pros, giving them some tips how to come out of the start doors, how to negotiate the jump. Everybody, I'll just say this, every bio says, why do you ski? That's the last question on there. All of them say fun, because it's a lot of fun. And that is the reason that we got into this sport to begin with. It's really fun. I like how big the mountains are, because we usually ski at a really small mountain. you can hear both beeps from both starts and it's confusing as to which beep is yours so they recommended that you watch the lights turn because they'll give you a better sense of yourself and your timing to be able to know when your gates are going to open ready let's go Isaac
What a great day. We're going to move it down to the plaza this afternoon for autograph signing, award ceremony for the young athletes. So big thanks to everybody here at Taos for sponsoring and hosting us here at Taos Ski Valley. Best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals. Always served ice cold. It will take a miracle to come back from this. Heartbreaking end of the season. But what's this? For the moments when anticipation. Fox counting down. Five seconds. Three, two, becomes celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect fit for each customer and, of course, they are obsessed with the process. We have 300 experts in Surefoot on the world that all use the exact same process. Surefoot. Better fitting, better skiing. Deal on the best shed or garage, visit toughshed.com. Uh, so, today's race um, is the Super Slalom, you know, where we set the course about 15 meters apart, uh, the gates. Um, yesterday, we had qualifying. After qualifying, I moved a few gates around, but we got down to some hard snow yesterday, so we decided to keep most of the course as it is. And uh, the athletes seem to love it. The courses are, you know, one of the girls yesterday, she was 300 different. So the courses are pretty darn equal, which is a good sign for us. Um, there is a little rut forming, but we're getting down to a little firm layer. So we're hoping that if we keep side slipping it, you know, high speed side slipping, that we'll be able to uh, pull this one off today. Um, and then we have to decide for tomorrow, do we put a cat on the hill or try to fill in the ruts? Um, you know, with the temps only getting down to like 20 tonight, we're not quite sure. So that's a that's a big call we have to make this afternoon. And then we'll set a giant slalom for tomorrow and we'll do it all over again. Yep, so yesterday we qualified 30 two men, 16 women, and so basically the first place man will race against the 32nd place man, and so on until we get to the champion. Um, same with the girls, one against 16, and they work their way down. Um, and the field that we have this year is incredible. I mean, just in lift line this morning, we had to wait for avalanche control, so uh, everyone was kind of, we had two loads this morning, 7.30 and 8.15, and at 8.15, I looked around and I felt like I was at a World Cup or the Olympics or something like that. Our field is so tremendously great here. Um, we're very grateful that they're all here. I do have to give a shout out to Bert's crew, the Taos crew. Without them, we'd be in trouble. Um, Wesley and Tommy, our cat drivers, have saved the day because obviously everyone's heard. We had 50 inches of snow in two and a half days. Um, and without them, we'd be in trouble as well. But the crowd's here. Everyone's having a good time, good music, good vibes, and we're excited to be here. First run of the uh, round of 32 here in Taos at the World Championship. And, you know, I had a great qualifying yesterday, was able to get second. So, you know, it, we left the course, so the, the grooves are there from yesterday. And I just, I saw, I didn't see a little groove coming onto the flats and my, the inside of my boot hit the snow and I leaned in a little bit and pretty much went down on my side, but was able to have a nice recovery and uh, get back up. And, my, my, the rest of the skiing was really good, so I was able to come, around, uh, come away ahead after run one, but 
Definitely got the heart rate up. Uh, need to be a little more sure-footed coming into the next one. Went up against Michael Ankeny and, and kind of whooped my ass. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's skiing pretty well. He's he might be knocking on the door today with maybe a top five or so. But Raphael Hauser from Austria, the 26-year-old. He's on the red course, looking up, and Niha Kuner, Kuner out in front, drops to the board over the bottom jump. Oh, oh wow, wow! We moved, a, we lost a shot there. I don't know what happened, but when we look back up, oh, without man, there's no easy rounds here. It's a pretty stacked field. A lot of uh. Good skiers, international and college, and uh, you know I'm a little bit foreign to this whole event. River is too fast for me, but let's see. I never know in dual slalom. Yeah, I gotta get after it, and uh, can't let up in any 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 one uh, series. So hopefully I make it far. But, uh, yeah, just happen to be out here and have fun. Here comes Radimus, half a gate behind now at the line. It's going to be Zavistre across and first into the quarterfinal. Um, was okay. Uh, there are so many tracks and you have to hit the track and yeah, I think that's the most important thing for today and yeah, we will see how many runs I've done. Starting gate is brand new to me, so it's like figuring that out. I struggled my first run, so today was like, it's rough to catch up with a lot of time, but uh, overall being here is amazing, it's fun. On will go Schmidt, who will be facing? Well, it's a qualification. I won four qualities in a row, but no race set, so hope to improve that this weekend. Kind of cursed, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Think how they're from the start into the bottom jump. They go, here comes, oh, Forcek, oh, Forcek out. Take off the go. Not, not the best uh, start out of the start yet, but I'm feeling good, so hopefully I can get better. He's doing everything. He's pushing Gates out of the way. He suddenly just does the 180. Wow. Same spot there, Uncle Lee. Jesus. Sport check. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going against Paula Moulton, who is like number one. They're close to number one in the world. You know, I'm trying to like potentially keep up with her, but obviously I need to have some realistic thoughts as well. So I'm not very fast compared to her. I understand how she feels because I was against Paula last year in the first <laughs> round. Oh, I'm, so I'm happy to be here. Always yeah, happy to be here. I mean, it felt good on my skis. The rut wasn't so bad at first, but it's looking a little bigger now. Oh yeah, going fast. The ruts are definitely there, and for shorter folks like the two of us, <laughs> our legs have to go kind of not where we think we want to be skiing. So you have to ski the rut instead of skiing the gates and like tight on the line. I was against Tuva and I had her up top and then she cooked me at the bottom, so. Dorby touches down to the finish to advance into the quarterfinals to face Aaron Milzinski. Well, New Mexico is all about adventure steeped in culture, and here in Taos, for example, we have an exceptional art scene, in part because of the inspiring alpine scenery. So it's been an exceptionally snowy season here at Taos and across New Mexico's nine ski resorts, which span all the way down to southern New Mexico. With this late season storm, it's awesome to see the great coverage here, and it's practically April. So New Mexico is home to dramatically different landscapes from Red Rock Canyons to wild and scenic rivers. Soon this spring snowmelt will bring an exciting whitewater rafting season. So here at Talski Valley, there's awesome lift served mountain biking and it's a really friendly place to try that for the first time. You can get a guide to show you the ropes. Speaking of ropes, there's also the Via Ferrata. There's a couple different routes that you can do. I think a, a beginner one and a more advanced one. At Angel Fire Resort, which is a short drive away, is an epic downhill mountain biking park. In my opinion, one of the best in the country. And they just finished up their Green Chili Challenge, which is where you descend on a mountain bike on snow. It's kind of the kickoff to the transition from ski season to mountain biking season. So late summer and early fall are a really magical time here in New Mexico. The air is filled with the smell of green chili roasting and the aspens are just starting to turn gold. But you really can't go wrong with when to visit New Mexico because here there's adventure in every season. 
When you first arrive at the ski valley, first you're greeted by the awesome plaza and the cute little ice rink. Um, and you see just a bit of the resort. It's deceiving because most of it, you have to get on the lift one to see the rest. Um, the terrain here is around 50% advanced and expert, but by no means is it not beginner friendly. Um, great ski school here for little ones all the way up to adults. It's really easy for families to come here, ski and stay and enjoy this Alpine. Yeah, it's super exciting to have this blend of diehard locals, you know, young families who are just starting off skiing, and then of course these world-class skiers, and of course the kids skiing super fun to see and to have it all come together here at the end of a great season is really special. Denise Dingsletter on the left hand side representing Austria, newcomer to the game. She's going up against Miss Paula Moulton who won this particular event last season, fresh off the World Cup. Really soft. Like in Austria, it's more ice, and we we tend to take away straight a line because it's so icy. So you don't need to give yourself that much room because the turn is so much shorter. It was Rosie is ripping for, and she touches down off the bottom jump. Spin it to semifinals goes Paula Bolton. So my sister is in this race as well, which is super fun. Uh, and I don't think I ever done like a pro race against my sister in the Stargate. We done some fist races against each other, but it's not the same. So the ideal would be if we both win our matchups and we can meet in the big final. That's the goal. <laughs> Get to the next round and race too. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah, no, it's a little ruddy by now, but it doesn't feel unsafe. It feels fun. You just have to trust the rut and go for it, honestly. Of course, you guys are normal. Facing off against Paula Molson. It feels really good, but like I said, Erin and I have a ski for the same team. Uh, it's Sports Insurance. They also sponsored a race today. So it is a bittersweet feeling meeting one of my teammates, but Aaron has got me a few times this season, so it did feel win to be on the winning side this time. I mean, weather is great. It's so nice that you can just ski around in your race suit without freezing or anything. I need to work on my flats. I'm incredibly slow in the flats, so my, my goal is to ski a bit straighter and catch some more time on the flats. Pretty solid. Yeah. It's been a while since I've been on slalom ski, so I was just feeling it out. And yeah. Hunt goes Trish Mankin to face off against Uwe Norbay. Take it away. Champions out of track to go, particularly Sovex going to get a jump, but not by much down the red. Oh, all kinds of twisted as Hauser is Sovex over the. Oh, Sovex, all kinds of twisted around. Sideways. Oh, what a save. By Sovex, but here comes Hauser. Almost landed straight on my back. Yeah, I said I was trying to not do any big mistakes today, and there we have one. Sobek is not in sight. It's going to be Hauser moving into the semi-final round on goes the Austrian. Um, it's, now it's tough. The slope is pretty rough. Um, you have to ski clean, and yeah, it's just that. And let the ski go, so that's my goal, and uh, I try to, to push it. This is my very first time uh, competing at the World Tour. Uh, so normally I would compete at the World Cup, but then and then it overlaps. So it's the first time for me having the chance and having the time to come out here. And it's so far it's been so fun with all the guys. And Smooth and clean as he makes his way off the first jump. Mass pulling away now. It to the finish he goes. Oh, goes Sam Mays. So first run around eight done here. Taos and. Uh, I'm feeling good. Each run, learning a little little bit about the courses, and it's challenging. The ruts are deep, so you have to take what the hill's giving you and make the best of it. You gotta know where to go. I'm learning about the gates after the cut, and uh, you know, at this point, it's fitness and tactics, so I'm excited. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm a bit tired of the yeah, jet lag, but yeah, it's shining, so I'm feeling good. Blue course pulls away, and he knows he's on the red side. Keep quickening it out, but uh, it's all about 
Schmidt right now, pulling away now. Alexander Schmidt with the advantage of Hankin. He's trying to close the gap as he charges hard to the finish. Not gonna happen today. On goes Alexander Schmidt, the rookie from Germany. So I'm Kaya Norby. I am 24 years old from Oslo, Norway. My name is Tiva Norby. I'm Kaya's sister and I'm 27 years old from Oslo, Norway. It's really fun. I've been trying to get Kaya out to more of the proto races. Uh, she's been a little scared of the injury. She has a history of getting injured in, um, yeah, from weird things, let's say that. So she wanted to do a year kind of off the pro tour, uh, but I'm really happy that she came out for this event. She's been killing it on the college circuit this year, so I knew that if she came, she would be fast. And I'm just very happy to be up there with her. Today was really fun. I was, uh, you always hope, and you always know that anything could happen, but I had no expectations. I was honestly just very happy that I qualified yesterday and was in it for the brackets. Um, and what I told myself is just everything that I do beyond the point of qualifying is a bonus. So that managed, <laughs> like that made it easier to like keep the shoulders down and not getting stressed or nervous. I just had fun today and that helped me being fast, so that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> and action didn't think we both would make it this far. So it wasn't really I wasn't really thinking about it. But no. then I was like, if we both, if I beat Trisha and you beat Paula we would be in the big final together and that would be really cool. Yeah, but but no, after looking at the brackets yesterday, seeing that we were far away from each other's, I was like, there's no chance we're gonna meet. Yeah. Or at least like that the possibility would be there, but it turned out that we almost <laughs> we, met actually, so. And I was very happy we didn't meet up like in the early, yeah. like in the first few rounds, cause I don't know, it's more fun when we're both in it. Yeah, I guess what I'm very proud of today is that I was not psyched out by the rots. I actually enjoyed skiing in them. It kind of reminds me of college skiing and I think that's an advantage for me to ski in deep ruts. And I think for me one really fun thing today was that I tried a brand new pair of skis. Uh, I actually did Von Deer, so I never really skied on them before so I didn't really know if they would be much different but I think they really they're really good ones and made me ski the ruts like Kaya said. I think almost the ruttier and like more harder the course got, the better we did. Yeah. So it was fun. No, I, and I've been really lucky this year to be a part of the sports insurance team. Uh, we, they made it so easy for us to come out for every event. And I'm excited for another season and I'm excited for the race tomorrow and see if we can do as well tomorrow as we did today. Mm. Um, for me, I was taking today as like the day where if I don't do well, that's totally fine because I have no expectations. The GS is actually the event that I was looking the most forward to because I think I'm stronger in that event. To me it's a little opposite, like this slalom, that's my jam. That's like where I feel most confident. That's the most races we do is on slalom skis. Um, so I have a new technique tomorrow or a new strategy I'd say. I brought a pair of master skis that are very different from the skis that these other yeah. girls will be on. Easier to turn, a little softer so I'm just excited to see um, if it pays off. If it pays off, if yeah. it might be a disaster or it might be really good. I feel like it's either or. But um, I would say, in terms of expectations, I definitely had higher expectations for my skiing today than tomorrow. Is more a test event for me, and if it goes well, I'll be really stoked. <laughs>
CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. Uh, I'm here with Paula Molson and with Kaya Norby. Paula, how is the track holding up? Uh, the rut's deep. <laughs> That's all I have to say. It's okay, but it's deep. So you gotta take those tips deep and uh, just trust that your ski is gonna come around at the end of the turn. Comes Molson off the bottom jump, touches down. Here come the advantage on that red course side. It's gonna be close across the line. Wow. Molson there first. With the advantage of point. One, one, eight. Can't blink your eyes that quick. Oh, my secret, I guess. I don't know, I can't tell. That would be very stupid, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit quicker out of track they go. Both to get the advantage with that built into the start doors. So looking strong, pulling hard into the turn. She goes with a significant advantage. And on she goes into the finals. Paula Moulton, Norby will go down in the battle for third and fourth. It is the first time I beat Aaron this season, so it's a really good feeling, but at the same time, we ski for the same team, sports insurance, so it's a bittersweet feeling, but I'm very happy to advance uh, to the four. Norby trying to make it up here at the bottom of the red. Across the line, they're gonna go. It's gonna be oh, the man again with a 018.018 win for Mangan. Yeah, I think the there will be no fingers crossed super saves of the day for me this year. That's the goal. Um, hopefully just crossing the finish line with no more crashes. <laughs> this is well. This is for all the marbles to make it into the finals. Here we go. Down on track they go. Narrow margin. Mangan had a 0-1-8. Cannot see the difference in the opening of the doors. Norby out in front. Pulling away. Norby doing a good job. Across the line she goes with the win. And on she will go into the finals to face Paula Moulton. Yeah, I'm uh, really enjoying it. Um, uh, it's beautiful here and uh, just having fun. Hard to say, I'm um, <laughs> putting down two good runs and uh, then hoping that I can be faster than the Swiss guys this time. <laughs> Out on track they go, spinning a really strong start over Hauser, but we said Hauser poured on through the rut they go. It gets quicker right here. Here comes Hauser, Spittinger looks like he's gonna get to the line first, across he goes. Spittinger winning the first of two runs, a point one six two for Reddo. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I enjoy really this event, this parallel. Um, yeah, I like it, and yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> the champion, Reto Schmidinger, back in the tails of the ski. Schmidinger go. He gets the jump with that advantage down to pitch. You go, but Hauser doesn't give away any quarter at the top. Hauser's right there with him down to pitch. They go. Here it goes, gets really quick right here, right alongside Schmidinger. Hauser out front though, but the Austrian cross it first, gets the win over Schmidinger. Yeah, it's nice, it's not so easy. Um, yeah, the snow is pretty difficult and there are deep tracks, so uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. Super low and aerodynamic and is tucked off the jump first. Touching down, wide and wild. Here comes Mays trying to close the gap. This is just the first of two runs. The German with the win by .464. It's the first time World Pro Ski Tour. Uh, and now I gotta go up, uh, go up and go against one of my friends from the from the other tour and uh, yeah, let the better man win, I guess. Schmidt with the advantage. Now his doors will open first by 4.64 seconds. But boy, Sam Mays got a powerful start. Taking the turn, he's out in front. Mays has got enough right now to get it done. Over Schmidt into the finish. She goes on to the finals for his first time here in the Pro Tour of the Belgium, winning it. Uh, my name is Sam Maas. I'm from Belgium, or I was born in Belgium, grew up in Austria, and I currently ski for the Belgium Alpine Ski Team, or, or also for Team Global Racing and uh, it was my first time here competing at the World Pro Ski Tour. I mean, the season was definitely very long, the World Cup season, and, and definitely a bit tired, but I knew coming into this weekend, it's, this is another great opportunity. Uh, I mean, this is, I do this for a living, and in the end, it's, it's also about earning money, but uh, it was great. It was a great experience. Uh, I love the vibe out here, just like, how everything flows, you know, there's not like certain timelines that have to be held, so it's, 
it's uh, yeah a lot of fun and, and you just go with the flow you're like you're enjoying everything a lot more and uh, there's no pressure either like you come here this is a season ender for us and we try to like enjoy ski racing as much as possible and uh, that makes it a great event I think yeah. we share a house with 16 people down in Taos so we've had some good fun yesterday afternoon we'll have some fun today and and, and that just makes it a great experience like coming from the World Cup you know you're always in your own room and and like tensions are so high also between athletes and everything and here it's just yeah may the better one win and, and everyone is just enjoying themselves a lot more I mean there is a lot of money on the line but there's nothing to lose really there's only to gain and that makes it very enjoyable for all of us I think yeah definitely nervous uh, I mean I had some I had a good qualifier yesterday I uh, was happy with that and then just trying to find my groove today, you know, it's, I think it's all about consistency because you see a lot of fast skiers out there, but in the end it comes down that you like have 10 good solid runs without big mistakes and, and that was my big goal was to like survive the top 10-15 gates which were the toughest and then once you get onto the flatter part, push as hard as you can and uh, once I committed coming here I was like, okay, we. I want to go for it and, and obviously like having fun at the same time but still taking it serious and, and yeah. Welcome to Taos, a place guided by our fierce independence and confluence of cultures and further emboldened by our connection to Mother Nature. A place that challenges itself to be better not bigger, to preserve the essence of winter. From electrifying our fleet to improving the health of our forests, we strive to be better for the good. We're not supposed to be out here. Outside expectations. Built for the outdoors. With the capability to climb this high, we're not supposed to be out here. Which is exactly why we are. The off-road ready Mazda CX-50. We're looking for outsiders. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be the future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad, and they were right. Let's move along. Here we go. The cadence begins. Five yellow lights and go to green. This is the first of two runs in the consolation round. Down on the pitch they go. Good even start by both these pros. Good clean high line, put your foot against the run. Looks like Mankin has a bit of a gap as she touches down. Norby gonna straighten out these last three gates, try to close the gap, it's gonna be the American at the line first with the advantage going to Trisha Mankin. Two, four, four for Mankin. Ready to rock and roll, off and running. Out on track they come, the first of their two runs. The consolation round, like the Alexander route in front. Oh, what oh, happened there? Oh, Lordy, where'd he go? It's just got launched. It happened so quick. It helps a little bit for sure. Advan advantage is always good, but you have to ski twice and uh, don't rest on your advantage. So Mankin's door is open first, but it's Norby there with a super strong start to put the pressure on at the top of the hill. Norby puts her ski in that rut, riding it around. Mankin trails now as they drop their way down to the pitch into the first jump. That battle for third, fourth, 60, 4,500 bucks and 2,500 bucks on the line. That's the line. Oh, Trish gets stood up there across the line. Goes Norby with the win. One, five, nine for Norby. Up and running. Track he goes. Drop it down, clean and smooth. Got a nice touch for the snow. So tomorrow's GS, but right now we're settling up things on the slalom side. It's going to be all Reddo at the line, across the line. He will go into the third step of the podium, and Alexander down to the board. Yeah, my season was pretty good, pretty consistent, but hope to do to do even better here. 
Is that? How about that? Out on track they go. Strong start on Luke Kors side. Course. Mays gets the jump over Hauser, but we see this Hauser poured on the bottom. But Mays is incredible out of the start here. Mays was 11th at Palisades. He's looking like he's looking for the big payday here. And Taos across the line, he goes with a big win. I think we're all enjoying it out here, and it's so nice that you guys have us here, and it's awesome. Skate drop, here we go! The second ahead, Mays with that strong advantage, diving down through the ruts. Does Hauser have anything for him? Mays clean and smooth, making it look easy through the ruts. Comes Hauser pouring on the steam. Deep history in his family of pro ski, or ski, oh, all kinds of trouble, and he's going to give it up there. No nope. let's hear it for Sam Mays from Belgium at the top step of the podium. Hands in the air, fist pumping, $20,000. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, with the field that is here, I definitely surprised myself by making it to the big final, but I'm giving it all that I have. And Norbolt coming at you now, Norby on the red course side. Tuba gets the jump over Molson. A little bit of a bobble for for Molson as they make their way to the turn. Norby out in front, tour champion two years ago. She's got this one in control. We know what happens right here. Touch it down here is the advantage going away. It's gonna be Molson, the first to two runs with the win by 448.448. Four, 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 um, I'm just happy to be here. I think Tuba's a great competitor. Um, I think she proves that Sometimes abstinence is key, key when it comes to ski racing, so sometimes the more time you take off, the faster you get. He's trying to time it out on track to go. With that advantage built in of a 448, wow. gets a little bit twisted as Norby tries to stay focused on her own course. Knows she may have some advantage at the bottom, but it's Paula Moulton pulling away. Wow. Norby falling behind as Moulton hammering away in the panels on the blue side with the jump to go. Over the jump in good shape, skis back on the snow. It's going to be Paula Moulton at the line to win today. Unbelievable competition on Kaleem. Two days of racing, 20 grand in your pocket. What do you think? bit of a relief, I think. I think uh, there's pressure coming in as a World Cup skier to perform, but I'm happy to have one day done. I'm pretty tired. I think we're all a little tired. So I'm excited to go into tomorrow with hopefully a little bit more sleep and maybe a little bit less wind. Look at that. Nice, fresh, new Seiko watch. Yeah, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's a great end of the season for all of us, I think. Uh, it's coming out here, having the good weather enjoying ourselves, racing against each other, and uh, that's what it's all about.